Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this flea market angel Christmas ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. Let's start with the faces. These are one inch wooden ball knobs, and this is a wood burning tool. And I'm just going to touch the tip of the tool. I have the rounded tip. I am looking at the ball knob from all angles to determine the smoothest, clearest surface for the face. If I hold down the tool longer, it'll make a larger, darker eye like that. Next, um, for the mouth and nose, I'm going to use this acrylic paint. This is Ceramco by Delta Mendocino Red, but it's really old. I don't even know if they still make that. Then I'm just going to go dot, dot, connect, nose, dot, dot, nose. Depending on how high or how low you put the mouth, you get a different sort of a, a different character and a different look. This is a Pigma, Pigma Micron 01 in a brown color. I'm gonna draw the, draw the eyelashes and the eyebrows. So there, I do two or three little lashes in the corners, two or three in the top, and then two little eyebrows. Finally, adding a little bit of blush with a Q-tip brings a lot of personality to the face. For the angel's body, for her dress, I wanted to use this plate print. I've turned the plates upside down because I like the way that it scallops and I drew the pattern. Here, let me set it here. I think it'll show up better here. I drew the pattern um, so that the pattern just uh, follows the edge of the plate. So anyway, I'm going to take two of these and pin them right sides together. So around the outside, leaving the top, uh, the, the flat edge open, turn it to the right side and stuff it. In order to get a nice smooth shape when I stuff it, I tightened up my stitch length and now I'm gonna clip into the seam allowance. And after I clip, I'm actually gonna trim the seam allowance a little bit so it's nice and close to the seam. And hopefully I will have a nice smooth edge when I stuff this. Now I'll turn this to the right side and stuff it. The angel's body is stuffed and it's not perfectly, perfectly smooth, but it looks pretty good. So I'll take my double strand of heavy duty thread and I'll gather up the top. I'm securing the thread in the seam allowance and I'm stitching about a quarter of an inch down. Just doing a running stitch and I like to use a thimble. I know not everyone likes a thimble, but I, I just can't sew without it. I think I'm going to make this the front because this um, edge is a little bit more decorative than this one. It's a little thicker. And I'll choose a face. And I'm just going to squeeze out some hot glue on the flat edge of the head bead and just secure it to the top of the body. Right now the head might look a little bit small. Actually, it looks okay. But Obviously, when you add the hair, <laughs> it gets a lot bigger. 
Now we'll add a little collar around her neck. I'm going to gather up, this is about 15 inches of lace, flat lace, and I will gather it up to create her collar. I'm just going to fold back the end, secure my thread, and then gather it up by going in and out, in and out like this, all the way to the end. There we go. And now I'll place this around her neck and join the two ends in the back by stitching them together and then securing my thread. That looks good. I measured this lace and I know that it's 5 eighths of an inch wide, but you can use anything from three eighths to probably seven eighths. Okay, now we're going to do her hair. For her hair, we're gonna start with two four by six inch index cards. And here's the yarn that I've chosen. And you might wanna make some adjustments according to the thickness and the uh, fiber content of your yarn. But I have found that with this yarn, I'm going to wrap the cards 40 times. And this is the short way. I went over about three inches and now I'm gonna go back. Actually, I kind of lost count, but I think by the time I get back, it'll be about 40. And since I'm going over it um, twice, so once and then twice, and I'm doing front and back, there's actually four layers of yarn. I hope that made sense. Two on the front, two on the back. And I'm pretty sure this is enough. I'm, I'm trying not to pull too hard because if you pull too hard, it can cause the, um, the card to fold. And so that's why I kind of try to keep my left hand underneath on the back to prevent that. Now I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch across the center twice. So this way and this way. Here's how it looks. And now I'll tear out the card and remove it. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I use this hair technique for a lot of different projects, even beards, like this is a Santa beard too. I'm gonna to apply some glue across the top, kind of like a, like a headband from ear to ear. If she had an ear, that's where that would be. Now I'm pressing the seam of the hair yarn of the wig into that glue. I'm gonna peek to be sure that it's uh, forward enough. And then I'm gonna add some more glue from ear to the back of her neck on one side. And then I'll press that in. And then the same thing on the other side. And there we go. Now I'm gonna draw this hair back and up and I'm going to tie it off into a top knot. I still have my thread from gathering the lace, so I'll just use this. I'm just gonna hold it, wrap it nice and tight and tie it off. I'm gonna tie it in front, but to one side, my right, her left, because I know that's where I wanna glue a little embellishment and that will help to secure this, uh, this knot right here. I'm not sure what embellishment I'm going to use, but there will be something right there. Next is her, we're gonna add a little decoration at her neck. I haven't quite decided, but I'm pretty sure I wanna use one of these flowers. They just have a lot of color and they're vintage, so they kind of have a flea market feel, if that makes sense. I just hope they stay together. <laughs> okay, that's going to look good. But before I glue that on, I'm going to add a little bow. I have one 16th inch ribbon 
and I'm just going to tie a bow, nothing to it, about like that. And then I'm going to hot glue it underneath the lace. It goes under there. And then I'll trim the streamers. There we go. And now I think I'm going to place this with, uh, hmm, maybe like this. So the pink is at the top and the purple's at the bottom. That looks good. Okay, then a wire halo. This is 20 gauge gold wire. Not real gold, gold colored wire. And I took off about six or seven inches and twisted the ends together and shaped this into a circle. This is bent up at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm gonna put some glue right here and press it into her top knot. Like that. Then I want another embellishment right here in her hair. I was thinking of these little, I don't know, maybe they're berries? What do you think? That's pretty cute, right? Okay. I'm gonna trim off the excess stem and add some hot glue and press that just a little off center. into her hairstyle. I don't want them sticking out too far. That looks good. Now I have some of this 1 16th inch ribbon that is threaded onto a fairly decent sized needle. I like a nice long hanging loop. You can always make it shorter. And now finally for the wings, I have a couple of options. One is a white, uh, it's just a three inch doily. That's pretty small. And this one is three and a half. This one kind of blends into the hair. This one I think is too small. See if I have anything else. Well, believe it or not, these are my only options. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this bigger one. I'm going to fold it over, add some glue here, and glue the halves together. You don't need a lot of glue. And then I'm going to glue this to the back of her head right here, not way down here. That's, um, if you like that, it's fine, but I prefer when it's up a little bit and it's actually glued to the back of the head. There we go, there's her little wings. Oh, she's so cute. Aw. And our little flea market angel ornament is done. Now I'm going to describe the pattern for you. I, I set this down on the fabric to determine the exact, um, you know, the best placement and it was this one, the three and a half inch circle. So I drew a three and a half inch circle and then, and I drew it on graph paper. This is four and a quarter inches tall. And so after I had my circle, I just kind of drew a line up to four and a half and over. And I always like to leave about an inch and a half at the top. Let's cut that off to an inch and a half because it has to be wide enough so that I can turn it and stuff it. So three and a half inch circle, four and a quarter tall, and just round off the pattern like this to four and a quarter. Then I folded it in half and I kind of smoothed it out. You know, I fold it in half and cut it. Then, as I say, I got a little frustrated because I was having a hard time lining this up exactly on the print. 
And I can see that this fabric was designed actually to go this way. I can tell by the shadows and the design. I think you can see how this uh, three and a half inch circle just really accommodates the size of the plate in the pattern plus the seam allowance. But you can imagine that when I tried just kind of laying this down, I was trying to line it up exactly and pin it and cut it, but it didn't always wind up being perfectly centered. So that's when I realized I would be better off if I had a window template like this. And then I could see, and I just trace around it with my um, disappearing marker and cut it out like that. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.